There is a brand new large language model from the company Anthropic. It's called Claw 3, and it's really a giant leap over the previous model, Claw 2. And based on the top benchmark testing that they posted, they beat Gemini 1.0 Ultra, the recent version that Google put out, their best version, and they beat GPT-4, the best version of ChatGPT, sometimes by a lot. In the coding category, for example, it's almost at 85% with zero shot prompting versus 67%. And it's available right now, so I'll show it to you in action, but I kinda wanna show you exactly what this is all about. So Claw 3 actually comes in three different models. So this is similar to Gemini. Gemini has Nano, they have Pro, and they have Ultra. So Claw did the same thing. They have three models, Haiku, Sonnet, and Opus. Now Opus is their best model, but this one requires a paid upgrade. So this is the one you're gonna get access to if you use Claw for free. And this one is gonna be requiring you to upgrade to the premium version, which is $20 a month. And all three versions of Claw 3 actually have really great vision capabilities. Here's again, another benchmark for vision, how well it could analyze images and see what's inside of them. And look at GPT-4 here, my favorite vision capability of any large language model. It doesn't even win in any category here. It's lost in all these categories. And it looks like Gemini now, Gemini Ultra is winning, but Claude is keeping up with their best model. The Opus model, sometimes this middle model is also winning. And this is one of my favorite updates here. This is the main reason I use GPT-4 over anything else. Gemini, Claude, a lot of times they would refuse to answer. So they had a lot of guardrails here that wouldn't let them answer and it looks like with the three different models of claw 3 over 2.1 they have significantly changed that so now it's closer to 10 percent or lower when before it was closer to 25 percent here for how many times it would refuse it and with every model we obviously expect it to be more accurate so it looks like again in the benchmark testing between claw 2.1 and the new version Again, they're testing Opus here. So every time you see Opus, that's the best model. So that's close to Gemini Ultra as far as the best model that Google has and GPT-4, the best model from OpenAI. And Claude was always good at having basically the largest context window. But right now, they are releasing Claude 3 with a 200K context window up on launch, which is right now which is obviously massive. But it says all three models will be capable of taking in an input of 1 million or exceeding 1 million tokens. So we'll see when they roll this out as well inside of their models. This is really exciting. It looks like we're all moving towards the 1 million context token in on the input side this time, but 200K context window up on launch available right now. Now, if you're building on top of Claude, if you're using their API to build your applications, this is the cost that they have published. So the cost for this model, the Opus model here, is $15 on the input side for a million tokens and on the output side, $75. This is the page from the chat GPT side. So GPT-4 Turbo, 10 for a million on the input, 30 for a million on the output side and GPT-4 is a little bit more expensive. So this is obviously an expensive model, but if you look at their benchmarks, you may want to actually upgrade. So let me show you the benchmarks in more detail. And here's the benchmark right here, but remember this is on their website. So we'll take this for a little bit of test here, but when it comes to coding, it's at 85% where GPT-4, that's only at 67%. This is zero shot prompting. That is a massive upgrade. And some of these, it's even getting close to 100%, over 95% in multiple categories over here. And you can see exactly what these benchmarks are. These are some of the more popular benchmarks when they run these different models against. Okay, let's jump into Claude and let's take this for a test. I wanna test a few different things in this video and then I'll make a much more deep dive video comparing the best version of Claude against the best version of ChatGPT and Gemini. Let's check the vision capability. I wanna see how well it does here. And this time I'll just use Sonnet. So you can see over here, Claude 3 Sonnet. This is the free version. Right now I'm on the free version of Claude. I'll upgrade in a second to the Opus version to show you that. And I'm gonna ask it to write me a product description. So this is a good use case because this is a projector, but it's very unclear. I made sure I don't name the file anything that I could recognize it from. And let me see if it could do this part. And it says it's a high-end gaming console in entertainment center. It's futuristic design. Really good product description, but he actually couldn't figure out what it was. Now, I did the same thing with GPT-4. And right here, enter this sleek projector. So right away, he knew this was a projector. This is not a traditional projector, so it's more short throw. But I wanted to see if he could figure out what that is. And he did. 
in the product description i don't think he did a good job at all he always goes way 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 overly promotional now in cloud we always have this limitation with the free version so i feel like the free version most of the times is not very usable I've used it for maybe an hour and I already ran out of credits. I didn't even do that much testing. I have one message left. So let me upgrade to pro. I upgrade to pro sometimes and then I cancel when I don't end up using it. But if it's going to be the best in class LLM, I might want to keep this subscription. And by the way, when you subscribe to pro, it will let you switch between the different models. So you would get the Opus model, which is the highest model that does require it, but you can downgrade to use a different model, same as GPT where you could switch between 4 and 3.5. Okay, now when you type in a new prompt, you'll have this option. So you have the Opus. This is the most intelligent model that I've mentioned. And this is the default model. And you can even go all the way back to 1.2 instant. So let me choose this other option. The, the third one, by the way, is not available. I think that one's only available through the API. It's a fast model, but it's obviously the lowest one out of the three that we have access to. And look how accurate this is. This sleek ultra short throw projector delivers a immersed visual experience. Wow, that's great. So this one is very accurate, very close to the Amazon description of this product. And again, really excellent when it comes to the tone and the writing style. I would rather take this than kind of the story format GPT takes. Ever been in the middle of the presentation and thought, wow, I could really use some oomph. Okay, way different type of writing style. Maybe you like this. I personally prefer the Claude version of this. Okay, let's go ahead and start a new chat. This time I'm going to check it for its tone and style. So let me go ahead and upload a file. And with Opus, you still have a maximum of five files, 10 megabytes each. So that will be your upload here. But remember, you have that massive context window. So they could be pretty large files. And it says it does a really good job. I think it says over 99% accuracy of what it could pull from the document. I'm going to say turn this into a newsletter. And with these type of tests, by the way, I keep my prompts as simple as possible with no context, just because I want to see what the model is trained on and tuned on to see what it could do by default. And I read through this and every single time the default writing style and the default tone is very conversational. Again, if you pause and read this, I think you're going to prefer this a lot more than ChatGPT. You could see ChatGPT, again, by default with no context here, uses things that are just overly promotional by default. Game changer for both individual and businesses. I definitely did not say a game changer in that video, so it's using that to kind of embellish what this video is all about. And I've noticed words like that throughout. And this one actually did a nice job with a PS line. Let me see if Claude added a PS line. It did not. So it knows a little bit about marketing. So in emails, PS line uh, are usually the most read line after the subject line. So it did know that ChatGPT is just a better marketing tool, but I have to really fine tune the tone and style. Now this time I'm gonna do a little bit of vision and a little bit of coding in the same test. So I'm gonna turn an image into code. This is gonna be basic code, but it's gonna have HTML, CSS and JavaScript in the same code. And it's a screenshot from the OpenAI website about their GPT-4 Turbo API pricing. So I took a picture from here, but this has this calculator here that's gonna require a little bit more on the coding side. It's not just gonna be design and text. Okay, so the first time around, it says, sorry, I cannot convert this into a full HTML, CSS, JavaScript because it infringes on copyright. Now, the first time I did it, before I recorded the video, it did do it. So let's see if I say, yes, you can if we could bypass it. So this is one of those times where we refuses to answer because of some guardrails. In this case, it looks like it's not letting me do it again. Now, ChatGPT gave me some text about it can't technically do it, but it did give me the output. Now, when I tested this, it didn't look great. But when Claude did answer me from the first time I did it, I saved that. So let me show you what it actually came up with. So this is the text here. This is the text I copied and pasted the first time it answered me. And it was all of it, HTML, JavaScript. And look at this. If I do the math, it's doing the math on this side. So it has everything that I needed. This is checkable here. And it's very much like the OpenAI website here. It changed this to hyperlink here that I could link to any page I want. And as I'm reading through the text, everything was exactly accurate based on 
what I looked at on that page. So this was a really good test because I wanted to see if it would refuse to answer. That's why I took a screenshot of someone else's. But sometimes you could create something like a sketch and see if it could turn it into code. But when I copied and pasted the chat GPT version, this is basically what it looked like. This is exact copy and paste. I did the exact same thing with both. This is the output I got out of chat GPT, right? Not even close. It missed everything. And as you could see, Claude gave me something that was far more usable and pretty much exactly like I had, but they have that copyright protection. But when you're turning your sketch into a code, this could be extremely useful using Claude. And I always like to test it for math. So here's an equation here. It's a picture. So it needs to analyze what's in the picture. Again, all this I'm using Opus here, the best version. And I gave the same thing to ChatGPT. And this time looks like ChatGPT got it right. This is a quadratic formula. So that's specifically what I was looking for, for it to explain it to me. This is a Swiss army knife of algebra. But Claude, it did not tell me at all that this is a quadratic equation. If I specifically chose quadratic equation because I knew what that looked like and this is going a different direction. So I guess when it comes to figuring out what a math equation looks like GPT, is winning that but again obviously this is just a one-time test i'm doing a couple hours after this came out and i'll do a more deep dive but let me show you a coding example because this is where the big gap is in the benchmark so i asked for a simple game of snake that it could write in python so far every time i've tested this it's only worked on gpt4 it's worked nowhere else it doesn't even tell me exactly how to install it and claude did a fantastic job helping me just get this code right here and then tell me exactly how to run it. If I run the game, it's gonna open this up right here and it worked perfectly fine. There are no issues with the game. The only thing is when I make this with GPT-4, if I lose this game, it actually gives me a kind of a game over window. In this case, if I lose, it just closes the window and brings me back into the terminal app. But this was the fastest and my best experience ever using any large language model without really understanding code to write Python and run a game locally on my computer. Now, in my early testing, Opus, Claw 3 Opus, was extremely surprising. It really impressed me in pretty much all my testing, except a couple of reasoning and math testing that I've ran it through. But I'll do a much deeper dive video comparing it with GPT-4 and Gemini Ultra to see really now what's the best model, because this benchmark is claiming that it's beating everything in every category. So we really need to take it to a deep dive test, but so far, pretty impressive. And if you haven't watched my other head-to-head -head video, I took GPT-4 and ran it against Gemini Ultra, the 1.0 version, and I did a detailed comparison across 10 different categories with a ton of different prompts. So watch that if you want to see who won that battle, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.